The Indian education sector is currently poised at the cusp of a great transformation. The Right of Children to Free and Compulsory Education Act, which came into force on April 1, 2010, guarantees every child between the ages of 6 and 14 years the right to free and compulsory education. The RTE Act contains many provisions that, if implemented in their true spirit, will empower students and parents to demand what is now a fundamental right to education. However, there is a long way to go before the objectives set by the RTE Act are realized. A gap still exists between the ideals enshrined in the Act and the reality of elementary education in India. Through the Audit to the Right to Education project, we have sought to measure the extent of this gap in selected areas using a well-established school accountability tool, the Community Scorecard. Through the use of this tool, the project's aim has been to start facilitating a constructive dialogue between the citizens and the service providers to ensure that the Right to Education Act is implemented effectively and equitably. The Audit to the Right to Education project has had the primary objective of introducing citizens to understand their fundamental rights to education as mandated under the Constitution and the RTE Act. These rights include, firstly, the right to access to a basic education. Secondly, the right to a minimum level of educational quality. Thirdly, the right of the child and the parent to participate in the education process. And finally, the right of the parent to hold the school and the state to account for the quality of this provision. The project has been delivered in two blocks in nine primary schools in the Kota district in Rajasthan state. The community scorecard was administered to 344 stakeholders of the nine schools spread over the three project areas of Similia, Bimore and Ward 48. The project used Kalajatas and community scorecards to introduce all the different stakeholders, from the providers, the head teachers and the teachers, to the users, the parents and the students, as to the rights to education. While the project started the process of awareness raising within these communities, an important event took place with the formation of the school management committees and their introduction as a significant role in ensuring that the rights under RTE are upheld. The School Management Committee, or SMC, comprises of 15 persons, 10 parents, the president who is the village sarpanch, the headmaster, two teachers and a student. In 2012, training was delivered through a cascade model in which master trainers were trained by central state officials and they in turn delivered this training to members of the School Management Committee. Now the School Management Committees have been formed and received their first round of training for the new members, it is time to take stock of what is working and assessing what can be done to make them even more effective. Primarily by focusing on assessing the learning outcomes as well as the process outcomes. Feedback from the project has provided some interesting clues for some ideas for improvement. From the parents, there is a call for assistance in understanding how to measure how well their children are doing in their studies. From the teachers, there is a call for assistance in making their children motivated to learn since the no-failure policy has had an adverse effect on their wards in this regard. The new project wishes to build on the first phase of community awareness on three fronts. Firstly, support awareness as to the functions and purposes of the school management committee. Secondly, trial simple and effective means and processes for delivering training to the members of the school management committee and provide a means for measuring the performance of the committee in terms of their outcomes, be they academic or non-academic. A school scorecard and the use of mobile phone technology has been trialed successfully in Andhra Pradesh under the government's Vidya Chaitanyam project in over 200 schools. Feedback from this innovative project has illustrated that parents are eager to be involved and, even when lacking literacy skills and any deep understanding of the education process, the community is keen to be engaged and is able to offer a service in support of the government 
for providing a quality education for their children. Going forward, what is needed is to strengthen the capacity of civil society to hold schools, be they public or private, accountable for the education service they provide. The establishment of school management committees and support to their proper functioning with means and processes are a vital opportunity for strengthening this accountability, when civil society itself is often lacking a clear understanding as to what is quality in education. Yeah.